incredibly, incredibly windy on the drive up here. Uh, semis were swerving all over the interstate. It was crazy. But up here, it's wild. There's not a breath of wind. I don't know what's going on. I gotta shed some layers. Whoo, it's, it's, it's toasty. Onward and upward, you're not gonna miss that ghost. Oh my my, look at that colorway. Not messing around in 2022 with that yellow. It's basically a bright yellow. I'm liking it, Brooks. You know, in these winter, dark winter months, so you're seen out there on the roads, testing this shoe out in the high country. Yes, I was. I was getting some looks out there in Leadville, Colorado. All right, Brooks goes 14. And just for all the new, let's welcome all the new subscribers with a colon. G-O-O -O colon down in the comments. You know what that means, everyone. For everyone that's new, just so you know, my left, your right, these are all my favorite running shoes, all right, uh, right now. Now, these will be replaced over time, all right? As shoes are coming onto the market in 2022, we're so, you know, fi I'll just say finally, it's time to start replacing some of these, but we got the, oh man, we got the Max Road 5. You might not be able to see that down there. Uh, Asics Nova Blast 2, New Balance Rebel V2, Hoka Mach 4, and the New Balance Fresh Foam More V3. With respect to the road scene, since we're doing a road shoe today, and on that note, let's dive in. Here we go. The Brooks Ghost 14 twisting more than I expected. I like it. A little bit of give there through that midsole. So good work there, Brooks. It's um, it's not crazy loose, but man, it's not bad. I like it. Maybe one goose on the screen. There you go. 54 miles in this shoe. We're looking at a 12. Woo! 12 millimeter drop, pretty aggressive, okay? So keep that in mind. I like I like higher drops, I'll just be frank. You know, I, I, that's why I usually don't opt for the ultra lineup, all right? Zero drop, unless I really just wanna stretch out the soleus, but I kinda like a higher drop. 12 is pretty aggressive though, so keep that in mind. If you, if you pick this shoe up, 36 in the heel, 24 in the forefoot. Let's fire up the scale here, and I'm realizing that I can actually show you guys the scale based on some recent live streams. We've done 8.9 ounces in my size. All right, can you guys soak that in? All right, so there's my score for pretty standard score for the weight. All right, upper engineered mesh with this 3D fit print, which basically it's this process that uses screen print technology to apply this engineered structure to the uppers. And it's not a gusseted tongue, not semi-gusseted. I kind of wish it was Brooks, just putting it out there. Brooks goes 15 idea. I was noticing, and we'll probably, talk, I'll mention this in the fit as well, maybe a little, so there's, you know, there's my scores for the upper, a little too much room in the toe box, just a smidge. I would actually prefer a little more, and again, I don't have a huge foot, so if you have a wide foot, I think this toe box could actually work out well for you. And in the winter months when it's cold and you're running in the snow, like my toes were fine. It's not gonna be, I guess I would say I wouldn't opt for this type of upper in 95 degree weather with humidity. I just I just say right now, it doesn't, it feels kind of like a winter shoe or a spring shoe where you might have some colder temperatures. Um, and I guess on that note, I'll, I'll mention it right now, link down below in the description. I'll do my best, upper right hand corner, boom. Brooks Ghost 14 GTX. I reviewed this maybe about seven to 10 days ago, roughly. So this is the Gore-Tex waterproof option. Gotta say, performed quite well out there in the mud and the rain, all right? So if you, if you haven't seen that review and you do live somewhere, you know, Brooks is based out of Seattle, Washington. So if you live somewhere where it gets a lot of rain, you might wanna look at the Brooks Ghost 14 GTX 
but it is going to cost you about $20 more, which actually, yeah, $20 might be worth, you know, might be worth investigating if you do live in some uh, wet conditions, all right? So there you go for the upper midsole, this DNA loft foam. It's a finely calibrated mix of EVA foam, rubber, and air. And I keep, I keep saying this, um, well, DNA loft extends the entire midsole, through the entire midsole for a softer ride. <sighs> the word that jumps out at me for this midsole is dense, but not heavy. <laughs> That's more than one word. But dense, meaning it's gonna go the distance. Like it's gonna last you a while. It's not gonna wear out. I, I am seeing absolutely zero creasing through the, like it's, I'm, I'm very impressed, Brooks. I don't know exactly the, 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 the chemical uh, composition of your midsoles, your DNA loft midsoles, but I'm, t I'm very impressed. And at the same time, 8.9 ounces, like with that type of density, it just feels, yeah. And you know what? I, shh, I have currently, <laughs> you're not gonna believe it. I have currently misplaced the durometer tester. It's somewhere, I took it to Leadville. I hope I didn't leave it. I think it's in my car, so I don't have it. But as far as the thumb test goes, um, ooh, it's nice. It's nice. It's not too firm. Brooks, uh, guys, I, I'm just, I, I am impressed overall with the midsole, okay? The ride is not like jumping out at you, but as far as the overall midsole score, um, like it's not gonna be any of these type of midsole scores over here, uh, but overall not too shabby. Blown rubber on the outsole, just epic. Not too hard on that, on that blown rubber fit we've already talked about it um again i would just prefer a little more uh you know a little not quite so much room through the toe box personally but again if you prefer a little more splaying with your toes this might work out for you comfort score there you go soak it in the positive is that outsole just love it mm, that blown rubber unbelievable it's gonna increase the durability, but it's not too firm. Actually, ooh, the Ghost 13, I'm just gonna grab it right now. Hold on, hold on. Let me just look here. Oh, interesting. It did change a little bit, but not, it looks like it's, oof, man, man. So this is the Ghost 13 from 2021. I'm, yeah, I think 20, early 2021, I took this uh, shoe up Mount Evans. I think I did about 20 to 25 miles up a huge, mountain with it was paved it was on a road but anyway so this shoe i really enjoyed in 2021 durability 600 plus miles there you go mostly because of that outsole and then again the density of the midsole uh daily trainer for me is how i will use this shoe moving forward price point 140 dollars i wish it was a i wish it was in that 115 to 135 range all right anything that for a daily trainer I, even like really 130. If you can keep your daily trainer price points under 130, mm, I like that. I don't know. Is it everything happening with the supply chain is why maybe that's 140? I'm not exactly sure, but uh, so anyway, that's the explanation for the less than seven score. Other shoes to buy, again, Brooks goes 14 GTX. If you just live somewhere that gets some rain or slush or snow, I know the springtime, uh, the snowiest months of the year in Colorado are March, March, basically, and April. So we're actually, you know, you, we probably will get a lot of snow in here in Colorado. So I'm actually very excited to keep training in the GTX in March here in Colorado, as it is the snowiest month in this state, which is interesting. All right, Peg 38, Hoka Clifton 8, A6 Gel Nimbus Light 3, Shoe Quick Specs for the Brooks Ghost 14. Soak it in one more time. That DNA lock foam, blown rubber, and $140. 7.33 out of 10, 7.33, we will take it. So that's, you know, you always wanna be above, you know, if you can get above 7.5, I start to get really excited. Heading toward the eight, so you get really, really excited, uh, but 7.33 is not too shabby. All right, I would buy it again. I really would. If you want, somebody messaged me on, uh, ooh, is it Scott over on Discord? He just said, Seth, what are your thoughts on the Ghost 14? And I said, hey, if you want a reliable daily trainer, it's gonna last you for a long time, just boom, Brooks Ghost 14. Just keeping in mind, 
the 12 millimeter drop. Way of life, you get the comment of the day. Here we go. Regarding the Ghost, possibly the most surprising shoe for me. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's it is it shocked me last year. Uh, actually, I, I trained in the Brooks Ghost 11 three years ago. Um, I skipped the 12 for some reason and then 13, 14. So when I became a Brooks ambassador, didn't know that. He says, full disclosure, I really wasn't that fussed about getting the shoe. I was in it for the tempo and glycerine combo. Love that combo, but the Ghost has really impressed me. Last year, I did 100K and used the Ghost, not GTX. Loved it. So now I totally recommend it for the runner who just wants to have a single shoe that does it all surprisingly well. Like you say, the outsole is intriguing. For the amount of rubber, I, rubber, I feel incredibly connected to the road. Best thing though, same as the glycerin these shoes get better and better as the mileage goes up it really shines more with each hundred miles you add to it yeah maybe that midsole just breathes a little bit way of life you get the comment of the day question of the day what would you rate 10 out of 10 i don't know if i've ever asked this is it a trip you've been on is it uh, a car that you've owned is it a uh, uh, uh your favorite meal your favorite restaurant what would you rate 10 out of 10. I can I can think of some things. Mm, I'll keep I'll keep that as for a story for another day. But that's the question of the day. Thanks for tuning in. Brooks Ghost GTX. We'll toss it to that right there from about seven to ten days ago. Brooks Ghost 14 GTX 50 mile full review. Right there, right there, right there. All right. See beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.